I wanted to call this video Black Swan Revelations Destroys Joel Richardson's Post Trib Pre Wrath Point of View. But I might come up with a better title. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll use it. But I'm telling you, once you go down this rabbit hole with FAI Studios and with Joel Richardson and Doubting Thomas, Doubting Thomas and, and company, this rabbit hole gets deep. I'm exhausted, folks. I'm exhausted because I've watched so many videos and trying to piece stuff together. And I think I have an understanding now of what they believe. And you're going to be shocked at what I found out. So stay tuned. Feel free to subscribe. Feel free to share this video with others. Maybe there are others that are like, should we go through the wrath of God or shouldn't we? This video is for you. This, this, Hopefully this will hammer the idea of why we believe in a pre-tribulation rapture and why the other views are actually ludicrous. Like it's it's insanity. The further down the rabbit hole you go, it's abs it absolutely gets nutso real fast. All right. So again, feel free to subscribe to this channel, share the video, watch this video a couple of times, because uh, I'm going to be playing some video clips from Joel himself, because you won't believe it if I say it, but if he says it, maybe you'll believe it a little bit more. And uh, so what I want to do is I want to paint again, a picture on our, uh, on our little whiteboard here of what we believe as a pre-tribber. And then I'm going to share a little bit about what I believe that Joel believes. And then you can go, well, that, that sounds insane. And then I want to play what he says. That way you get a better perspective and you can hear it from, from him. All right. So here we go here. All right, so we have, I do have to get a better writing board. I know that. I know that. Okay, so we have the pre-tribulation rapture, or the pre-trib, we, we have the tribulation. This is what we call the great tribulation right here. Now, you can, you can debate the time frame, but I think it's, it's pretty safe to say that most people, most Christians that have studied this from the last week of Daniel, uh, Daniel's prophecy where this, the seven, this is the 70th week. Uh, one week represents a year and we have seven years left to fulfill basically Jacob's trouble, the, the judgment of God upon Israel, the last week, the 70th week. That's what we're talking about here, this seven year period. So we pre-tribbers believe that when the Antichrist gets revealed or unveiled by the Holy Spirit, that we are taken up to heaven for seven years. This is what we call a pre-trib belief, right? We just believe we're out of here before the trouble happens on earth, before God's wrath is poured out on earth. I don't know why I write down pre-trip. It's not a pre-trip. It is trib. Pre-trib, as in tribulation. And I want to make this as simple as possible. Because it, it, if you listen to Joel Richardson and any of his videos, it gets very confusing. He prides himself on saying, guys, 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 folks. It doesn't get any easier than believing in the post-trib. It's so easy. It's so easy. And I'm like, e the way you explain it, it is the most difficult thing to understand on the planet. So post-trib. Pre-trib, to me, is before stuff starts hitting the fan. Post-trib, post-tribulation means after everything has hit the fan and then we have the millennium kingdom being established on earth by jesus christ himself 
I think that's pretty straightforward. I think that part's pretty straightforward. What people get mixed up on now is when, as I think every human being worth their salt is asking this question. When does the wrath of God start? I don't care. I don't care for pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib. I just want to be out of here when the wrath of God starts. Can you tell me when the wrath of God is starting and then I can pack my bags? I think that's what most people are thinking about. No matter what, when we're talking about timelines, pre-trib, mid-trib, all this stuff, most people are like, okay, I, I get it, but I don't get it. But what's happening here is this wrath of God stuff. Like, I don't want to be in his way if he's got wrath that he's pouring down on wicked people. I don't want to get in the way. I just want to be out. I love the Lord. I believe Jesus Christ is the son of God. When are we out of here? This is where it gets difficult for the people that are on the post-trib side. I just say, it's the whole tribulation. This is when the wrath of God gets poured out and it gets gradually worse. So it starts here with the Antichrist being revealed and it gets progressively worse till Jesus Christ comes back and touches down on the Mount of Olives because Jesus himself said, if I don't come back, nobody will be left. That tells me there is a progression and it tells me that there is a, a finite amount of time has to go by before Jesus goes, okay, I got to come. I have to come now. So if he didn't shorten that time and he came after that time, there'd be no one left. So he created a finite amount of time, which is a short time when you think about it in a Seven years is not a long time. But Jesus is saying, if 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 I had extended that, past that, there'd be nobody left. So I had to shorten the time. So it's seven years. And really, it could even you could even say that once the Antichrist sits down in the new temple that is that has been built, that that three and a half year period, if Jesus didn't come before or during that in within that three and a half year period, that there would be no one left. So that's how short, that's the shortest possible time is three and a half years. The longest would be seven years. So that's in my humble opinion, that is what I call um, the wrath of God. So now you can also say that this is the great tribulation. Why is it called the Great Tribulation? It's called the Great Tribulation because there's no time, there's never been a time like this before, and there will never be a time again like this. So remember when God made a promise to Noah, he said, I will never destroy the earth by a flood again, and I'll put my rainbow in the sky. So, that was never going to happen in that same way again, where the whole world gets destroyed by a flood. So this is the same thing going on here. This is why we call it the great tribulation. It's called Jacob's trouble because there's, there's not going to be, there was never a time before and there will never be a time after. Why? Because this is God dealing with the iniquity of Israel and all the other nations that have come against Israel as well, all at the same time within this seven-year period. There's going to be a time where the Antichrist is going to have his way with everyone on the earth, everyone. And it gets to a point where it basically climaxes at about the three and a half years, where it's basically now the Jews are like, okay, we're being betrayed by this guy. We thought he was the Messiah, but he's actually the Antichrist. And the Antichrist goes after everyone goes after Israel, goes after everyone, and it gets really bad. Then we see, I believe as well, the last three and a half years are going to be worse than the first three and a half years, but the first three and a half years are also very bad as well. 
So hopefully that makes sense. Again, we pre-tribbers believe that when the Antichrist is revealed, that we're out of here. And then there's seven years of Jacob's trouble, the Great Tribulation. And then Jesus Christ is coming back down to earth with his host, which is his angels. And with those of us that live in heaven, he's going to empty heaven with everybody. Everybody's coming out. Everybody. Nobody's being left in heaven. Everybody's coming out of heaven. How do we know this? Well, in Isaiah, it talks about that in the last couple of chapters of Isaiah. But then after we see heaven being dissolved, and Peter talks about heaven being burnt up and also earth and all this stuff. So you got to clear people out of there, out of heaven. So everybody's coming down to earth, thus outnumbering the Antichrist and his armies and dealing with the Antichrist and the false prophet and tossing them into the lake of fire. And then the devil gets put into a prison for a thousand years. That's what that's Armageddon. That happens after the seven year tribulation. I think we're pretty clear now on this little timeline. And now, what Joel is trying to do is he's trying to figure out okay, where does that wrath of God really start? And where does, you know, where's the rapture in the post trib? Because if you're pre wrath, you got to be over on this side. This is pre wrath. This is post-wrath, somewhere in here, most likely here, post-wrath. There's nothing for God to be mad at anymore. No, he's purged all iniquity. So post-wrath, pre-wrath. But according to Joel, there may not be a such thing as pre-wrath. In fact, what most likely will happen is we will have immortal bodies, resurrected bodies, heavenly bodies. And we will be walking around on earth as the 75 pound stones are dropping out of heaven and pancaking people. Joel saying that we're going to have an invincible body that we can make it through the wrath of God. Did you hear what I just said? Joel said that we will have invincible, we will have invincibility almost like superheroes, that we will make it through the wrath of God. We're going to be walking around while everyone else is dying around us, being pancaked by 75 pound hailstones. But we're going to go through the wrath of God. Now, I don't know if that's what you signed up for with FAI Studios, but that's what they believe. I find it easier to believe that we're in heaven for seven years than to be living on earth with invincible bodies. Because remember, we're still alive. Right now, I can get bit by a mosquito and get hurt right now, today. So it, it actually takes a little bit more belief to believe that your bodies are going to be changed so that while God is pouring down his wrath on you, that you are watching your neighbors go up in flames while you're walking around, sitting back, chilling, sipping iced tea while the world is burning up around you. I can't see it. I can't see it. I think it's easier to believe that we're out of here first. Again, based on first, first Thessalonians 4, where Paul says, we're going to go up. Jesus Christ is going to call us up. And those that are in heaven are going to come back to greet us. And we're going to meet him in the air and be with him forever. I think that's easier to believe. So if you don't believe me, now we're going to go listen to Joel. We're going to listen to one of his videos. And I'm going to pause it here so I can cue it up. And then uh, I'll bring this video up real quick here. One second here. All right, before I go to the video, 
I'm just going to let Joel share his thoughts for like maybe a minute or two, but I was always under the understanding that when Jesus comes back, his second coming, the day of Christ, that Jesus Christ was going to touch down in the Mount of Olives with his host, just right out of Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13, and touch down. And he's going to gather his elect from the farthest reaches of heaven. And you can say his earth as well, thus fulfilling what Moses was talking about in Deuteronomy 29 and 30. And then also prophesied a little bit later in Ezekiel, and I, I'm sure it's in Isaiah as well. That's what I, I always understood, but not according to Joel. Joel understood that Jesus is basically, unless I misunderstood him, touching down in Egypt and doing a procession all the way to Jerusalem, unlocking people from prison camps freeing prisoners, unlocking them, unlocking the doors as he's going, and then everybody's following Jesus Christ as a procession all the way to Jerusalem over a period of 40 to 75 days. That's what Joel is about to tell you. So let's just jump in here. And don't forget about the the Iron Man suits that we'll be wearing during the greatest wrath of God ever being poured on earth, that we are going to live through the wrath of God. Okay? Even though we don't see this anywhere in Scripture, but this is what Joel is uh, going to introduce to us here. So let's just go into this. Let me make sure. Let me make sure I have the audio. Yes. Okay. Here we go. That the scriptures clearly describe that after Jesus returns, there is a royal messianic procession, arguably all the way from Egypt, that as the greater Moses, Jesus retraces the path of the Exodus. And this could unfold over, a, you know, 45 or even a 75 day period something in that window that he's setting the prisoners free, the prisoners of war that are in concentration camps of the Antichrist throughout the whole area of modern-day Saudi Arabia and Jordan and all the way up there through the ancient kingdoms of Edom and Moab, and that he's marching, he's making procession. Again, I lay this all out in the book Sinai to Zion. It's a beautiful, amazing, glorious story told throughout the scriptures. Okay, but it's during that time that he is personally on the ground executing the wrath of God. You go, well, but how do we escape the wrath of God? Because I thought that's a non-negotiable, right? We're not appointed to wrath. We're going to come back to this. Well, the answer is we're in our glorified resurrected bodies. So we're impervious. Yes, we're on the ground and the wrath of God's being poured out, but we're not subject to it because we are immortal. Okay, so that would be, you know, sort of that particular view. All right, so for those of you that are like, I am on board with Joel because he believes in a pre-wrath. Turns out he doesn't believe in a pre-wrath. What he believes in that we're actually going to have immortal bodies going through the wrath of God on earth. And he doesn't believe necessarily in a pre-trib obviously a pre-tribulation he hates pre-tribbers hates us hates us he's like you guys are ludicrous for the idea that jesus christ could come in the clouds and grab his church grab his body and then go up to heaven for seven years you guys are nuts and in fact that is dangerous dangerous for you to teach people this and joel's accused me he said shane why are you why are you teaching people this hearsay this false doctrine why are you lying to your people why are you comforting them with these words that basically i i read out of paul's epistles where he's like comfort one another with these words 
What's the comfort? The comfort is that we're going to get raptured before the wrath of God. And even Jesus himself says in Luke 21, he says, pray that you are worthy. Pray that you'll be counted worthy to escape these things that are about to pass, come to pass. What is he talking about? He's talking about what he just talked about, which is the great tribulation. Jesus himself is saying, pray that you count yourself worthy. What does the word escape means? Escape means ex-cape. Ex-cape, meaning you leave your cape in someone else's hand. You leave your garment in someone else's hand as you are fleeing, as you are departing to heaven. That's what Jesus is saying. Pray that you're counted worthy of escape. How do you get count worthy of escape? I mentioned this in another video. If you are worthy of capital punishment, if you are worthy to die, you need two or more witnesses, according to the Bible, according to the Old Testament. You need two or more witnesses, two or three witnesses. If you're counted worthy to escape, I believe you need two or three witnesses. Who are those witnesses? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We have the witness that we are Jesus Christ. Who is that witness? It's the Holy Spirit living inside of us. We have that seal. And we're eagerly waiting for redemption of our heavenly body. Why? So that we can escape this body and escape Jacob's trouble. That's what Paul talks about. He's like, guys, we're all going to be changed. All of us. So Joel doesn't believe that. Doesn't believe that. So that tells me he doesn't believe in a resurrection. Tells me he doesn't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. In fact, he doesn't even believe in a rapture. His idea of a rapture is we go up, and we come down. And even in one of his other videos, he actually said that he's a little bit confused on the timing of it. If it happens three and a half years before Jesus comes down to the Mount of Olives. Now he's talking about Egypt, but let's just stick with the original video. He says he's okay with the idea of Jesus coming to get us three and a half years before he touches down in the Mount of Olives to take us up to heaven for three and a half years well joel i have news for you that is called pre-trip that is called mid-trip if you're taken up halfway through the tribulation the great tribulation that is three and a half years in that's during the abomination of desolation when jesus says flee judea don't look back so you can build an argument that the rapture could happen there you can build but then you're called a pre you're called a mid-tribber we happen to believe that it's before the Antichrist gets revealed, not during the tribulation. If you want to believe mid-trib, fine. But he doesn't even believe that. He's like, it could be three years. It could be two years. It could be one month before Jesus touches down on the Mount of Olives. As in 30 days before, meaning you go up to heaven, you made it six years, 11 months and then Jesus comes after almost the wrath of God is, is 30 days away from being completed. We go up to heaven for 30 days and then we cut back down. That's what he said. He's also said that he believes that it's actually a, a procession where we go up, meet with Jesus and escort him to Jerusalem, quoting the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. The problem is it was Jesus' disciples that were putting palm leaves down, escorting him into Jerusalem. It wasn't everyone else. It wasn't the whole city. And they were leading the way. This is different than what Joel's talking about. He's talking about we go up, we go up when Jesus is coming down and then back down. During the triumphal entry, people 
his disciples, Jesus' disciples were putting palm trees down, and then Jesus would walk over them with while riding on a donkey. And people were asking, what's going on? There was a great disturbance in all of Jerusalem because they're wondering what's going on here. They're like, who is this? This is Jesus of Nazareth. This is the king of the Jews. This is the king of Israel. Thus fulfilling prophecy. So I ha I still can't quite figure out why Joel can't stand pre-tribbers why he feels that is the most da dangerous. I thought telling people that you're going to go through the tribulation, the greatest tribulation on the planet in the history of mankind, but guys, your body's going to be immortal. You're going to be like Iron Man. You're going to be like the Avengers. You're going to be like Superman. Nuclear bombs going off, meteor showers, pestilence, scorpions stinging people. Your body is going to be impervious to all the wrath that's going. You're going to see your people that you worked with, associates, getting melted in front of you. But you're going to be okay for seven years. You won't be touched. And I've I've heard people say this, or I've heard people talk about this, that what happens if maybe... We're not being raptured, but we're actually just being invincible, like walking around the earth for seven years. I've heard people, but this is the first time I actually, somebody that I actually have watched several videos actually say this. And I think that is more ludicrous to believe that because they're building bunkers for people right now. They're building bunkers. They're asking you for money. To invest, and it's up to you, whatever you want to do with your money, go ahead. You know, I, I understand the idea behind it. Build a bunker so that you can hide from the wrath of the Lamb of God. That's that's really what you're doing at the end of the day. Because if they're believing that the Antichrist is going to show up and they're teaching you how to fight the Antichrist, and part of it is to build a bunker deep enough in the ground, secure enough that you can hide out for seven years in these bunkers and be protected and coincidentally hide yourself from the wrath of God. That's what they're doing. That's what they're asking you to donate is so that they can build bunkers to hide from the wrath of God. There's no, there's no other way to look at this, folks. There's no other way that you can interpret this and say, no, no, that's not what they're doing. They're teaching you to fight the Antichrist who's going to be able to destroy most people on the earth. Even the host arguably could be killed, as in angels could arguably be killed and stomped, like in the book of Daniel. Daniel talks about this. A third of mankind gets wiped out in the first six seals. At least another quarter of mankind gets wiped out in the next trumpets and bowls. Hailstones coming down that are 75 pounds, flattening people. We never even talked about the abyss being opened up and demonic spirits coming out, stinging men so that they wish they would die. They wish they could commit suicide. They wish they could kill themselves. But they can't do it. Why? Because for some reason, these scorpions are stinging them for five months. And they wish that they were dead. These are wicked people that want nothing to do with Jesus Christ and want nothing to do with God himself. And this is what's happening on earth. These people are being pancaked. And then you get people in heaven that dwell in heaven that are asking God how much longer before you avenge us. And God is saying, it'll be done when the other brethren that are like you die in the same way as you died. That tells me that something has to be fulfilled, that certain people have to go through it, but they're not impervious to it. They have to be persecuted. There are others that are going to be martyred. They're going to get their heads cut off because they refuse the mark of the beast but not according to Joel. According to Joel, if the Antichrist comes up to you, 
you don't have to take the mark and he's going to try and behead you and you're going to be like, I'm impervious. I'm impervious as they put you in handcuffs and take you away and then chop your head off. It's horrible. It's horrible what they're teaching. And I think the greater danger, he says the great danger of a pre-tribber is the idea that if Jesus doesn't come, that you have some explaining to do to your people. I think you're going to have explaining to do when you've caused people to believe in you instead of waiting for Jesus Christ to come. And they're going to look at you and say, why didn't you even hint at the idea that the a pre-tribulation was even possible? And Joel will say, well, I didn't know. I, I, I'm, I, I knew, but I didn't want to tell you guys because I thought that was dangerous for you to know. Well, Joel, we're stuck here now for seven years. What do you want to do? It's okay, guys. We are impervious to the wrath of God. Do you know how insane that will sound? To people that are following you that you say, guys, just believe that your body are, your bodies are superhuman. That you'll make it through the wrath of God. When you don't see that in scripture, in fact, you see people being beheaded for not taking the mark of the beast. And Joel's the only one saying, look, guys, you're just going to, you're going to participate by going through the wrath of God with superhuman bodies. That's what he just said. It's ludicrous. It's craziness. I'm telling you guys, the rabbit hole goes deeper than that. I've watched his videos. He's made a whole series, made over 60 videos coming against people that believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. When Paul says, look, I want you guys to be comforted. Don't worry about signs and all this other stuff that's coming because I already told you that the day of Christ cannot come until there's a falling away first. Then the son of perdition shows up. Then the day of Christ. So don't worry about it. You won't even be here. I wonder if the great falling away is going to be because of people like FAI Studios that are telling people that they're going to go through the wrath of God with super body suits as their friends are going to be beheaded around them because they don't believe what they're believing. They're like, guys, it's okay. We're impervious. As they get executed left, right, and center for not taking the mark of the beast. I just think it's way easier to believe that Jesus Christ can come back for his church, come back for his bride at any time. And that any time is when the Holy Spirit, and even, <laughs> this is so bizarre, Joel believes that it's actually the devil, and he said it in one of his videos, that the devil actually is the restrainer. And you've probably heard him say that and went, what? That's something a little bit different. He's very confusing to people. He's caused a lot of confusion with the brothers in the name of beloved. Beloved, hear me out, beloved. And then at the end of his videos, he's like, guys, I don't know. Be a brethren, be a Berean. Bre don't follow me. I don't know anything. I'm just making thousands of dollars off of you guys by building bomb shelters and stuff so I can hide myself and hide my family and hide all my possessions. Talks about that. Talks about that, that people are actually taking their possessions and hiding them in the clefts of rocks and then going into a den to hide themselves from God. And the ones that don't say rocks fall on us. Hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. That's these people right here. They're, they're asking you to help them build bomb shelters so they can hide from the wrath of Lamb. I don't know how else you can look at it. Anyways, I can go on and on, but the belief structure gets a little bit lost once you start going down the rabbit hole of 
guys, we don't know when we're getting raptured during the wrath of God. It could be three and a half years into the tribulation. It could be two years from Jesus touching down on the Mount of Olives. And in fact, Jesus is going to Egypt to progress to Jerusalem. I'm telling you, man, that rabbit hole goes down pretty far. And again, at the end of every video, you'll see Joel say this, guys, I don't know. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll be in heaven. If there is a pre-tribulation rapture, I'll be in heaven. And if Jesus corrects me and says, why didn't you teach the pre-tribulation rapture? I'll just say, well, I don't know. I don't care. I'm here. I just want to hug you, Jesus. I just want to hold you. That's his answer. That's what he said. It's like, I don't care. That's the worst. If that's the worst thing, I'm wrong and I still go to heaven. I think the worst thing is you're going to be here during the seven year tribulation. That's the worst thing because you don't believe. You don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You don't believe he's coming to gather his church. So you're going to get what you believe in. You believe strongly that you're going to be here. So you might get what you wish for. And you're going to have a lot of explaining to you to your comrades that are saying, Joel, why didn't you teach us about the pre-tribulation rapture? At least tell us, hey, I don't believe this, but this is what others believe so that they can make a choice. Instead of coming after the pre-tribbers and going after them video after video for over 60 videos, you've spent the last year and a half coming against pre-tribbers when you yourself don't even know what you believe. You don't know what you believe. Ever since... You got saved. You've never believed in a pre-tribulation rapture. So, and there's no progression. You've right away you closed your mind to a pre-tribulation rapture the day, the day you got saved, and you're like, nope, don't believe it. So whatever that time frame was 30 years ago, you still don't believe it. That tells me there's no progression. And in fact, you've read other commentaries to form your own opinion instead of reading the word of God. So I challenge you, I'm calling you out. I'm saying you should be reading the word of God and not trusting other people's opinions because you're going to get all mixed up. You're getting all mixed up. Your theology is getting a little screwy after a while as well. Because you don't know when the Lord's coming, when he's touching down, when we're getting raptured. You just mix it up. It could be anywhere within the wrath of God. And you're confusing people at the end of the day. You're causing confusion within the church, within the body of Christ. And I'm asking you to stop causing the confusion. I implore you to stop it. There you go. Hopefully you got something out of this. If you have... Uh, let me know if there's something you want me to dive a little bit deeper. There's obviously there's just go watch his videos, take notes. I have time codes and all kinds of stuff of what he said this. It's like, it's all over. And then after a while, you just kind of have to stop because you're like, wow, he's pretty far down the rabbit hole. And they even tease about that. What's it called? Let's just show this one video and I'll wrap this up here. I think it's this one. Is it this one. Yeah, I think this is the one where they talk about going down the rabbit hole. I think. I won't take much of your time, but I want to point you to the FAI app because all of our resources are in the rabbit hole of the FAI app. We, we have there you go. So they call it a rabbit hole themselves. So whatever. Anyways, enough of that. If you got something out of this, feel free to subscribe. Feel free to share your thoughts. Pass this video around. Share it with everyone you know. Watch it again. If you don't believe me, if you don't believe your eyes, if you don't believe your ears, watch it a couple of times. Go watch their videos and uh, way easier to believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. Anyways, have a good day. See you guys. Bye.